Whew. Let's talk about healthcare. More specifically, how we can improve healthcare one piece of trash at a time. See, last summer, I decided to go abroad. I wanted to study healthcare systems and global health and thought it would be a fun little break from the classroom and it would be a good time. And in my travels, I ended up in Telangana, India, in the city of Hyderabad, where I met Akash. And boy, Akash. This little six-year-old boy had energy levels that were just so contagious and a smile that would go from ear to ear that would easily light up any room. And I had the really cool opportunity to hang out with Akash. And throughout the afternoon, I learned a lot of fun things about him. Like the fact that he wanted to become a teacher. The fact that he loved learning and felt the need to contribute to a community that has already given him so much. Yeah, he's not like most other six-year-old boys I know. And as you can see, he doesn't really look like most other six-year-old boys either. Now, Akash suffers from a congenital birth defect that uh, required amputation from the hip down long before he knew how to walk. And as a result, he's been homebound most of his life, unable to go to school or participate with his peers. Akash's mother is his full-time caretaker, and because of that, has to spend most of her time uh, taking care of him. And that limits her ability to also leave the household and work and participate with her own community. Akash's crutches are made of wood, and they were made specifically for him about a year ago. And he's grown a lot since then, and can no longer really use those crutches because they don't support his needs. And now his mother worries that because she can't afford a new set of crutches, that she will no longer be able to support Akash's dream of becoming a teacher. So, how do we help? What can we do? Can we just send him the stuff he needs? Can we send him some of this? Is it really that easy? Is the solution that simple? Well, yes, it is. See, up until pretty recently, the stuff that's on stage with me was actually considered trash. Think back to the last time maybe you were hurt or maybe you know someone who needs to use this stuff regularly. Well, what probably ends up happening is you get prescribed this stuff, you use it for whatever amount of time you need to, but then what happens to it? Where does it go? What do we do with it? Well, odds are it ends up just collecting dust in our closets and basements and then goes to the thrift store and then later the dump. But look at these things. They're meant to last. They're not built to be used once and disposed of, but we treat them like that as if they're needles or disposable gloves when they really shouldn't be. It's wasteful. And in recognizing how wasteful that was, I started Project Embrace, a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to collecting previously owned durable medical equipment and redistributing them so they can be repurposed by patients in low resource settings worldwide. And I mean, that's a really simple. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> It's a simple idea, and to be totally honest with you, not a very impressive idea. <laughs> I mean, come on, it doesn't take much for me to come up on stage, point at all this stuff and say, that's not trash, and then all of you to agree with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and I mean, it's not groundbreaking to think that this stuff can be reused. And a lot of people shared that sentiment with me when I first started this. So I, I got two types of reactions when I first launched Project Embrace. The first was from experts, and it was along the lines of, well, this is great, Mohan, really cool idea, but come on, someone else has to be doing it already, right? And I mean, what do you know? You're just a kid. Yeah. And then the other was from my peers and my greater community, and it was more along the lines of, oh my gosh, finally. Mohan, I've had this stuff sitting around in my house forever, and I don't know what to do with it. I feel bad if I throw it out. And now you're telling me that if I give it to you, you can give it to someone who can reuse it? Sign me up. Where do I donate? Two really conflicting opinions, but there was one thing that 
was in common about them. And it was how it made me feel. Um, it almost felt as if I was just throwing a dart in the dark, and I was hitting something that just rang true to a lot of people, but I had no idea why or what. And so fast forward a few months after pursuing the idea, on my way to India, I stop at Oxford to present my vision for health on their stage. And <laughs> I remember <laughs> this day so clearly. So the audience was very visibly split. On one side of the room, we had all the Americans. And then on the other side of the room, we had some of Europe's top scholars in healthcare and global health. And I was right in the middle, <laughs> waiting to like, present my idea. And when I got to the punchline of, we should reuse this stuff, the American side got kind of excited. You could see people light up a little bit because, again, I was hitting something that made sense. But then, on the other side of the room, right in the front row, I look at our keynote speaker, and he's just looking at me like, <laughs> what is he going on about? We've been doing this. And it was in that moment that I realized I was missing a crucial piece of the puzzle. So I took a few steps back and started to really look into international healthcare systems and policy, and I learned something really interesting. So the United States is the only developed nation in the world that does not have universal health coverage. And regardless of your political stance on that, there's a lot of adverse consequences to that. Consequences like the production of easily preventable medical excess. See, in a lot of other systems that have comprehensive health policy, you get prescribed the use of this stuff, you use it, but then the expectation is that you give it back. You give it back so it can be redistributed to another patient who also has a similar need. Other governments have identified that reusing a walker or a wheelchair is not an unsafe practice, and that throwing that stuff away after one-time use is really wasteful. But it doesn't happen here. And, and that's not necessarily because we don't understand health policy, it's just because we haven't gotten to that point yet where we have to address those problems. So the idea, the innovation, is not me saying this isn't trash, we know that, the world knows that, but it's taking best practices from the public system and adapting it into a nonprofit. See, by doing that, we have two advantages. One, we have a very stable business system um, that has proven time and time again that people want to participate in something like this and that there is a need and that we should keep doing it. And the second is that we are flexible with who we can help. See, just because you may live in a country that has universal health coverage, that doesn't mean everyone gets health coverage. There's plenty of people that fall through the cracks but still have a need for this kind of stuff and just don't have access to it. I'm talking about the displaced, the uninsured, refugees, the list goes on. So what we can do as a nonprofit is look at those populations that deserve this health but don't get it from the public sector and target them specifically so everyone ends up getting covered. And that is really cool. So since we first launched, uh, we've collected hundreds of medical devices from our local community and have been able to distribute them to patients all around the world, from Telangana, India, to Swaziland, Africa, and make a big difference in the lives of so many people. And if you, if you told me that a year ago, I'd be standing here in front of all of you, I would not have believed you. But if there's one thing I do believe, if there's one thing I know, it's that we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we have if it wasn't for all of you. See, when it comes to healthcare and health policy, we often tell ourselves that, oh, I'm not qualified to talk about this stuff. I don't have whatever nth degree. I'm not a professional. I'm too young. What do I know? But innovation does not have to come in the form of cutting edge research or the advancement of biotechnology. It can be through simple evaluations of something that is already successful in one sector and applying it to another to create something new. Now, at the end of the day, we were able to get Akash, his set of crutches, and true to his nature, absolutely ecstatic about it, 
he's going to school, and his mom is incredibly grateful for what we've done. But we were also able to help so many other children just like him who had a similar need but didn't know where to go. See, when we feel empowered to make a difference, we do. It takes individuals to recognize a problem, but communities to realize a solution. And sometimes those solutions can come in the form of just reconsidering what all this is to us. Because at the end of the day, we really can improve healthcare one piece of trash at a time. Thank you. Uh, uh. Yeah.